Hello YouTube and people of the interwebs, welcome back to another Doctor Who video. Today, I still have not quite recovered from last night's episode, The Power of the Doctor, but today I'm going to be talking about all of the cameos, all of the cool spoilery stuff that happened in Doctor Who's centenary special, The Power of the Doctor. There are so many characters in this episode, it's genuinely kind of insane. From classic Doctors, to, to classic companions, to new Who classic Doctors, to literally everyone and their mum is in this episode. Not to mention the next time trailer for the 60th anniversary, which we are also going to be taking a quick little look at. With this amount of characters and people showing up in the episode, it's incredibly difficult to do them all justice, to give them all a reason to be in the story, and to make it still feel satisfying without it just being a jumbled mess. And I think, honestly, Chibnall did really well. Like, I don't feel like Power of the Doctor was just this complete jumbled mess with people thrown in there for the sake of it. Every single character there, obviously, yes, they served fan service, but they also had a reason to be there. So I'm going to go take a look at each of the people returning in, like, chronological order and talk about whether their appearance was good or whether their appearance was kind of pointless and bad. Now, obviously, we've got the Doctor, Yaz, and Dan. They're not cameos. They're just the main characters. But I do want to talk about Dan quickly and say... He is the most underwhelming character of the episode. Like, I, don't get me wrong, I love the episode, but Dan just disappears and then shows up right at the end. We don't see what happens to him in between. We don't even see Diane, Dan's love interest. It just sort of drops. What, like, what is the point of Dan? What's the point of being alive? Which is a shame, because I, I, he was all right in Flux, but yeah, I feel like Dan was completely wasted as a character. Anyway, on to something more positive. We'll go in chronological order. First big cameo is Ace McShane. Dorothy McShane, the seventh Doctor's companion from the classic era, played by Sophie Aldred. Okay, she came back and no, no problems at all. Perfect. Sophie Aldred's performance was sensational, as it always has been, and just, although it's nostalgia bait, but seeing her whack a Dalek with that baseball bat was genuinely brilliant, and the fact that we got to sort of hear about what happened to her ending, because obviously with Classic Who, the show got cancelled with her and Sylvester McCoy when they walk off into the distance, and we never heard of Ace again. Luckily, we find out now, well, I say luckily, it's quite sad, the Doctor just sort of dropped her off one day and never came back for her, but they get to satisfyingly wrap that up with Sylvester McCoy and Ace, and it, I'll talk about Sylvester later. Anyway, next character to return is Tegan, played by Janet Fielding. Now, I do think... 90% of this character was done brilliantly, and I'm really glad she came back. Brilliant performance from Janet Fielding, as ever, once again, just iconic. But I do feel like, although Tegan's always been stroppy, I mean, she's the self-declared mouth on legs, but, um, I don't know. I feel like there was maybe a little bit of that adventurous, fun twinkle that she used to have in the classic series was kind of missing here. Like, she was always a bit stroppy, in this episode. Like, there was no point where she did seem to actually like the Doctor. The entire time she seemed to just be fed up. And, I don't know, I think maybe some of the lines could have been played a little bit more jokerly. Like, when she asks to be put on board the TARDIS, it came ac across as quite aggressive. Maybe, I don't know, maybe reword that. But yeah, overall, 90% Tegan was handled really, really well. And one of the best moments of the episode is the little moment she has with Peter Davison, where he mentions Adric. And she says Braveheart Tegan and all of that. Like, the fan service there, on point, perfect. And it's story-wise really important, because obviously the story's about Yaz ending up having to leave because all these other companions before her do, and they get their little support group, which is just amazing. Next character is Kate Stewart. And, yeah, there's not much to say here. Kate always just sort of shows up. She's pretty cool, and then she leaves. And that's exactly what she did in this episode. She showed up, she girl-bossed a bit, and then she dipped. Now comes for the genuine insane part of the episode, which my reaction to was just like, I was lost for words. <laughs> and I still have not recovered. It might be my favorite, or at least one of my favorite scenes in the entirety of Doctor Who, but we had 
the classic Who Doctors come along in the form of the Watcher of the Edge or the Protector of the Edge or something like that, some sci-fi term. First up we had David Bradley as the First Doctor, then we had Peter Davison reprising his role as the Fifth Doctor, Colin Baker playing the Sixth Doctor, Sylvester McCoy playing the Seventh Doctor, and Paul McGann playing the Eighth Doctor. Now, talking about those last two Doctors quick, Seven and Eight had a brilliant, it was only a really brief interaction, but when Eight was refusing to put on the, the robes, I don't do robes and all of that, and Seven was like, oh, there's always one. I don't do robes. There's always one. That's the big difference. I am a manifestation of our consciousness. I can wear what I like. It was just so good. Like, they managed to get many bits of characterization in there, despite giving most of the plot to Jodie. It didn't feel overstuffed. And all of these Doctors had a really good narrative reason to be there, which is just brilliant. Like, genuinely brilliant. And I think it, it's not, like, there for the sake of being there. The best thing I can relate it to is, like, Spider-Man No Way Home. Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire return in that film, playing Spider-Man, and it doesn't feel like they're there for the sake of it. It feels like they're there to help the main protagonist and properly that they don't steal the limelight. It feels proper and, ah, oh, it was magical. First Doctor, brilliant. There's not too much to say. The Fifth Doctor, as I mentioned earlier, gets that brilliant moment with Tegan, and you basically see him in the flesh, and it was just brilliant, like, fantastic performance all round from every single one of the Doctors, and seeing the Fifth and Seventh Doctor being able to interact with their companions was just sensational, genuinely brilliant. I think it is probably some of the best sort of multi-Doctor stuff Doctor Who's ever done. And I know they're technically not the Doctor, but yeah, you know what I mean, it was just brilliant. Then the next cameo to sort of chase his way on was Graham O'Brien, who, I don't know whether to count this as a cameo because he's part of the Chibnall era, but I mean, he did leave the show like two years ago, so yeah, I'm, 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 I'm counting it as a cameo. Yeah, Graham's inclusion was brilliant, Bradley Walsh is funny as ever, and yeah, I kind of liked that he just sort of showed up out of nowhere. And obviously it was set up, because in series 12 when he leaves, he's like, I'm going to go and investigate and use the psychic paper. And yeah, he was just fun. And him flirting with Ace was quite funny, like really nicely done. Yeah, just bringing him back ties up the Jodie era. However, alongside Graham was a lack of Tosin Cole playing Ryan Sinclair. Which, yeah, it's a shame, because I think... Just having him there would have been nice to sort of bookend the era, but also would there have been any point in having him in the story at all? And, I mean, series 11 and 12, he's a mid-companion, in my opinion, not through the fault of anyone necessarily, he's just, there's a bit of overstuffing in the story, and a lot of the time he's just sort of stood around, which, which is a shame, but yeah, maybe he'd have just slowed down the pacing of this episode. I'm assuming Tossin Cole didn't want to come back, who knows, but yeah, it's a shame that Ryan wasn't there just to say his final goodbyes. Next one, which also made me whoop for joy, the Fugitive Doctor, played by Joe Martin, another fantastic character who, uh, I feel this is another one where I'm really glad she was in it, even though it was tiny, she, she did get to reprise her role, but she deserves way more time. Like, even if she only got a cameo in this episode, she should have had more time in either Flux or Legend of the Sea Devils or any ep other episode of the Jodie era. She feels like she's... Realistically, she was there for half a Fugitive of the Jadoon. She showed up for five minutes in Time, Planet, whatever it was called, and now she's back for another three minutes. And don't get me wrong, there are great three minutes, brilliant performance from Joe Martin, but she just deserves more. So I'm going to say that was an 80% satisfying character return. Not perfect by any means, but once again, the story's so crammed, and I don't think it's a fault of the story, it's just a fault of the era overall, that we didn't have more Joe Martin in. Now, another scene which just blows everything out of the water, again, we had the classic companions all coming together as a little team gang fam to sort of talk about their doctors and to almost overcome the trauma and the pain of saying goodbye and leaving the doctor. But yeah, I'll just list them all because they all sort of fall into the same category. But we had the wonderful Joe Grant, played by Katie Manning, Ian Chesterton, Mel Bush, and a laptop. I mean, obviously these lot were alongside the other companions, but yeah, the laptop. We never really got an explanation as to who that is. Maybe it's deliberately there for sort of interpretation. But yeah, if you look closely in the circle of the Doctor's former friends, there is a laptop. We don't see the screen. And my baseline assumption at the moment is 
Maybe that's where Toss and Cole was going to have a little cameo, but they never got to film it. Maybe it was going to be some other character, uh, and they never just they just never never managed to film it. Who knows? But yeah, w whatever it's there for, let me know what you think in the comments down below because that's quite cool. And yeah, our next cameo, and I think it's basically the final cameo of the episode, and arguably the the most oh my god moment out of the entire episode. It would have been better if we didn't kind of know it was coming, because I did predict this and I made a theory video about it the other day, like three days ago before the episode. But David Tennant, David Tennant is back and he is the Doctor. And according to Russell T Davies, David Tennant is playing the 14th Doctor and Shuti Gatwa is playing the 15th. So this isn't the 10th Doctor again, this is David Tennant playing a new version of the Doctor. He's still got Ten's characteristics, as seen from the final scene where he talks about, ooh, new teeth, or lack of new teeth, or whatever it is. But yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see, and just seeing David Tennant back in his new costume, it's just so cool. Like, he's my childhood. The, the new Who Doctors are my childhood. Seeing him back was just sensational. Now, I'm going to click, quick, click, click. I'm going to quickly go through the trailer. But yeah, we've got Donna Noble back. We've got the Celestial Toymaker, probably. We don't know if it's the Celestial Toymaker. It's just an assumption. Played by Neil Patrick Harris. And yeah, we've got the Doctor. Obviously not forgetting our quick glimpse at the now confirmed as 15th Doctor. Played by the wonderful Shooty Gatwa. I cannot wait. There's also something like worth noting. In the trailer, we see David Tennant scoot under a closing spaceship door. Now, if you look at all the controls on that spaceship, they're really low down. Now, why are the controls so small? An average person would have to like bend right down to press all the buttons on the controls. So I think this is just nothing more than confirmation that Beep the Meep, who is this comic book villain from Doctor Who's classic series, tiny little rabbit creature, he's going to be in the specials. It's been long rumoured, we've seen leaked filming pictures of something that looks like Beep the Meep, and yeah, if you want to know all the Beep the Meep context, go and find those videos on my channel, there's who is Be Beep the Meep and all of this stuff, I, I promise I'm not making this up if you've never heard of him before, but yeah. This trailer kind of confirms Beep the Meep is back, which is just brilliant. And yeah, that brings us to the end of today's video. Let me know what you thought in the comments down below. Eight Doctors in one episode is insane. And I can't lie, I do think Chris Chibnall managed to pull it off really, really well. Because eight different incarnations of the Doctor live on screen in the same episode without archive footage. Genuinely mental. Thank you for watching. Please do remember to like, comment, subscribe. Please do turn on the notification bell to make sure you don't miss out. Follow my Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, all of the social medias, and goodbye.